23 minutes before seven here on the program. Uh, let's just quickly ask you that sports question once again. I know that uh, the graphic wasn't up, so let's look. This is the question that uh, Valen's asking this morning. Australia have secured a series whitewash in the Ashes three times. How many times have England managed to do this? So that's the question this morning at Morning Live SABC or hashtag Morning Live Sports Trivia. We look forward to hearing from you and we'll give you the answer in the next sports bulletin here on the program in the next hour. Turning our attention to issues here at the SABC, uh, the SABC has requested that the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, that's ICASA, conduct an urgent public review of regulations that allow multi-choice and other subscription broadcasters to carry SABC 1, 2 and 3 for free known in the industry as the must-carry regulations and passed in 2008. These regulations ensure that all subscription broadcasters with more than 30 channels must carry the SABC's three free-to-air television channels. To talk more on this, we are joined in studio by Michael Markovitz, who is SABC board member uh, here in, uh, in studio. Good to have you. Thank you very, very Thanks much for, for coming you. in. Pleasure. Uh, before we get to this, just uh, a, a quick, I suppose, uh, overview. How has it been so far for the new board? Well, I think it's been a, an action-packed first month. I think we've, uh, we've really tried to get on top of things, and it'll take a lot longer. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm pleased to say we've got a great team in the board. We're all very committed to public broadcasting. We're committed to turning the SABC around and moving on from some of the troubles we've had in the past. So I'm quite excited. I know my colleagues are about getting things right here. Uh, we think there's some fantastic people at the SABC across all of the services. And I think people are just looking for some stability, yeah. some, some leadership. And, and we hope we're going to be help facilitate that in the next in the next months. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like what you you mentioned to me or fair saying that it is not business as usual. Things well, it, are changing. Yeah, it definitely is not business as usual. I think what one of the things that the board decided to do from the onset was to review all contracts and regulations which impacted on the SABC's viability in our view. So we're doing a complete review of everything that impacts on our, on our financial situation. And, and what we've said, and when we, we dealt with these must-carry regulations yesterday, what we said is we're certainly not looking to blame ICASA or any subscription broadcaster for the SABC's financial woes. Mm. We've stated very clearly and emphatically what those are caused by. We know that parliaments identified that it was due to maladministration, and corruption, etc., and we're certainly dealing with those issues in the courts and trying to restore the credibility of the SABC by, by chasing people and making them accountable for anything that they've done in the past. But that's a very well-known reason why the SABC has its financial issues. Less well-known are some of the regulations that have been passed over the years that impact on the public broadcaster. And hence, this is where we're sitting at right now. So what's under review now and what you would like to have a, an urgent public review of is the fact that multi-choice, i.e. DSTV and pay channels, can broadcast SABC 1, 2 and 3 for free. So in other words, what you're saying is that multi-choice doesn't pay us to do that. They just broadcast it for free, right? Absolutely. That, that is the case. Look, what, we, what we're saying, and it's, it's, we're not looking for a full policy review, the law actually stipulates, it's in the Electronic Communications Act, it stipulates that it must be subject to commercial negotiation. Mm. So it doesn't say how much multi-choice must pay or whether it's for free or not for free. It very specifically says subject to commercial negotiation. Now, when ICASA passed the regulations after public inquiry back in 2007, 2008, they came up with the view, well, ICASA, ICASA was quite, quite clear is that no one must pay the SABC for these channels. They must not be seen as a support for public broadcasting. And on, on the other side, uh, um, uh, the, the, the subscription broadcasters must, must, not, must pay for the transmission costs. Mm -hmm. Now, we feel that that deviated from what the legislation said. Because if you're saying in a regulation that something has to be for free, well, how can it be subject to commercial negotiation? Because what's it to negotiate about yeah. when it's already decided that it'll be for free? So all we're looking for a review of is that element, to say, give us a chance, as the SABC, to commercially negotiate with 
subscription broad broadcasters. And unfortunately, the regulation doesn't allow for that. Yeah. I mean, some of the, some of the, the viewers on the SABC channels um, uh, via the, the multi-choice platform have raised concerns about having to pay for both their monthly subscriptions and their annual SABC TV license. And I know that the collection of SABC TV licenses is a major issue for, for the broadcaster. Um, I mean, and I suppose one can understand the dilemma that they're in. Yeah, I look, I, I hear that dilemma, but when you look at the actual amount of the SABC TV license, it's less than a rand a day, let's face it. I mean, people probably give that more to people to look after their cars mm -hmm. in the streets in South Africa every day. Less than a rand a day for, 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 for services, three t television channels, five television channels, if you include DSTV channels, radio stations. So I hear that, but the SABC license fee compared to the DSTV monthly fee is very, very small. Mm. So we also believe that um, DSTV is getting benefit, not just DSTV, but any subscription broadcasters from the SABC's channels because a lot of people may choose to take a subscription package because those channels are on there. Absolutely. Let's face it, I mean, the top TV shows in the country are on SABC 1, 2 and 3. Yeah. And that is a matter of public record. I mean, you, as, as, as the board, you've also stated that, that the, the channels 1, 2 and 3 are amongst the most watched channels on DSTV. How much revenue do you think that SABC has lost through this? Well, look... We don't really want to get into that. We, we're currently valuing our channels at the moment, and we want it to be subject to commercial negotiation. So we don't really want to negotiate with, with, uh, with pay TV over the air. And I think the, 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 all we want is for the regulatory situation to be corrected so that commercial negotiations can begin. We're not stipulating this is how much you must pay. Uh, we haven't prejudged it. But what we've done, and, and, and one of the arguments is, OK, SABC, this has been going on for eight years. Um, why now? I think because something's been wrong for eight years doesn't mean we should just leave it. Mm. We've now evaluated these are the types of things that we need to correct. And I think that the fact that we haven't done anything about it for eight years, we need to take that on the chin as the SABC. But that doesn't mean to say we should let it ride. Yeah. We've asked the CASA to urgently open it up for review. We know that they're considering it. We, they, we also know they've got a packed, a packed program. But this is something that we think goes to the protection of public broadcasting. And we're hoping that they'll address it as soon as possible. Yeah. We, we, we speak DSTV. I know there's more to it. Which, which other SA based subscription broadcasters carry the SABC for free? Uh, at the moment, I don't think there are any similar okay. deals at the moment. But I think, what, as you said in your introduction, anyone who carries more than 30 channels is required to carry us, but doesn't have to pay. Yeah. So if another uh, uh, a subscription uh, bouquet came to us, or su subscription uh, player came to us and said, we, we want to carry you, in terms of the regulations, we wouldn't be able to charge them for that. Yes. So it's just about correcting that element to create a proper framework for commercial negotiations. Multi-choice have said that, um, that this can't be done in this financial year. This can only be done, negotiated in the next financial year. So when are we looking at, if, if the negotiations do begin, when? Or is it already starting? Well, look, there is nothing to stop multi-choice and the SABC from negotiating now in good faith. And I, and I think that really would be something that we could deal with them directly on. Um, because they've said it, they can't review it in this financial year. And I think their financial year is March. Um, and we will obviously hope to have discussions with them directly on this. But we're very keen, and I think must carry is one of the first things we've identified, is by no means the last, where we'll try and see to what extent the framework, the regulatory framework, actually s serves to protect public broadcasting. Mm. And we hope we're going to be able to address many of these mechanisms in the next month. All right. We'll leave it there for this morning. Thank you very, very much for joining us here on the program, getting some clarity on the way forward for the must-free regulation in uh, uh, the, uh, uh, if for ICASA and subscription broadcasters basically having to carry the SABC's channels 1, 2 and 3 for free on their channels. But SABC saying, yeah, look, we need to review that. I think there's a lot of money that's being lost through this. But uh, talking to us about this from the SABC board, uh, Michael Markovitz, good to have you and thank Thank you very, very much for joining us on the program. Let's take a break here and... Uh